Do you want to know how to make anime by yourself? No problem. I'm just a guy who makes anime alone only using my laptop. And you can do it too. So today, I'm gonna teach you how to create animations with a software called DSS. Which is a really underrated software, but with its help I was able to create a lot of the more complicated shots that I needed to produce for my Ruby fan animations. If this is your first time hearing about it, I already made another video talking about this software before, where I go over most of its basic features. So I recommend you to go ahead and watch this video first. Because in this tutorial, I want to dive a little deeper into actually making animations with it. And if by any chance you don't have DSS installed, but you still want to try it out and follow the video, I've actually added a link to the free version of the software that you can download right now and start creating your animations with it. So if you're ready to learn how to do it, let's start with the video. So after you'll finish downloading and opening either the paid or the free version of DSS, you can immediately start setting up your scene by importing your character, changing the background, and choosing the right camera. And even though you have a lot of animated cameras to choose from, I actually prefer using only the static medium camera, because I have a special method to make more dynamic shots with it. And I'm gonna talk about it later in the video, but for now I want you to finish the setup process by opening the settings menu and disabling the IK functions in the blinking. Then you can just go ahead and save your scene. Now that we're done with the setup, we can finally start talking about what you actually came here to see, which is how to use it to make your animations. But before that, there is one thing that you really need to understand about DSS. And that thing is, that you can't really animate anything inside the software itself. In fact, you shouldn't really think of it as an animation software at all. Instead, you should think of it as a compositing software for VRM characters, where you can import all sort of different elements and combine them together to create your animated shots. So throughout this video, I'm gonna show you three different methods to create your animated motions and how to composite them inside DSS. One of the methods will require you to purchase another software, and will not work if you're using the free version of DSS, but the other two are completely free, and you can use them in all of the versions of DSS without any problem. And the last method will include a service that I never talked about on this channel before, so even if you've seen my older tutorials, I really recommend you to watch till the end of this video. But now, let's start by talking about the paid method first, which is to animate the motions by yourself using a software called VRM Posing Desktop which is an amazing software that I'm using to create most of my shots, but it is a bit difficult to use it for animating a lot of characters or synchronizing different motions at the same time. In these sort of cases, I prefer animating my character inside VRM Posing Desktop and then sending the motion to DSS and recording it as a VMD file that I can use however I want. So in order to do that, you must first make your animation using the loop VRMA function. Once you're finished, you can send the data to other apps by clicking on the VMC protocol button on the left. Click on send, and then activate the VMC protocol function inside DSS. And once you'll play your animation inside VRM Posing Desktop, you'll be able to see your character performing it in DSS as well. To record this motion as a VMD file, you can simply click on Record Motion. Choose the folder where you want to save it, and stop the recording whenever you want. Now I recommend giving it a name, so you can keep better track of your files. But before importing it back to DSS, I recommend closing and reopening it. Because sometimes activating the VMC protocol can mess up other functions inside DSS. So after you're done reloading your scene, you can import the motion by clicking on Load Assets. Then, click on Load Motion and choose your file. Now you can play your animation by dragging it to the timeline from the Avatar Motion tab, and pressing the space bar on your keyboard. So now after you're done animating one character in your scene, you will probably want to add more characters to interact with them. You can do that by clicking on the change avatar function. But this time, click on any one of the other slots and import your second character. Then you can reposition them in the scene and animate them by dragging motions to their timeline. And to animate the second character, I'm actually gonna use my second method, which is to convert Mixamo animations to VMD using a free software called XR Animator. Since I already made an entire video talking about this process before, and I don't really want to waste your time by going over it again right now, I'm gonna add a link to my previous video about it above, so you can feel free to check it out if you want to hear about it in more detail. So after you're done converting the motion to VMD, and importing it to DSS like I showed you before, you can simply drag it to the timeline, and adjust the timing and positioning of the characters until everything is aligned. As you can see, this shot already looks pretty good. But as I said before, there is one more thing that I like adding to my animations to make it feel more dynamic. And that thing is adding camera movements. 
You can do that by right-clicking on the camera in your timeline. Then choose which character you want the camera to follow, and which specific body part you want to track. Now when you'll play your animation, the camera will follow the movements of your character. If you want to change the angle of the camera, you can easily do it by changing the X, Y, and Z parameters in the Position Offset section. And you can just go ahead and play around with it until you get a result that you're happy with. So now after we went over two different methods of creating your motions, it's finally time to talk about my third method. That will allow you to create almost every motion you can think of, by simply writing a prompt and clicking on Generate. But before that, if you're finding this video helpful, you can support this channel by clicking on the like and subscribe button below. But now, it's time to talk about my third method, that you can use right now to create an unlimited amount of animated motions completely for free. By using an amazing AI tool called Motion. If you want to access it, you just need to enter their Discord server, and you can immediately start downloading and using motions that other people have made, or start creating your own in one of their creation booths. But if you want to create your motions privately, you can also do that by starting a private chat with their motion bot. Over there, you will get a short tutorial on how to use this tool. And after you'll finish going over it, you'll be ready to start creating your own motions. So basically what you need to do, is to go all the way down to the chat box and start by typing slash. Then, click on motion, and then you can start to describe the motion that you want to create inside the prompt box. After you're done, go to character and click on bot. And now in the in place box, you can either click on true if you want your character to stay in place, or on false if you want them to move around. I'm gonna click on false, and after that, you can just press on enter and motion bot will immediately start to generate your motion. After it will finish, you can check the two variations that it created by clicking on the play button. If you don't like any of them, you can always try to revise your prompt or just click on generate again. But if you want to download them as FBX files, you can either click on M1 to download the motion on the left, or on M2 to download the motion on the right. And you can easily find these motions inside your downloads folder. But now, we have a problem. In order to import these motions into DSS, we're gonna have to convert them to the VMD file format. And if you're gonna try doing it with XR Animator like I showed you in the previous method, it probably won't work. So to solve this problem, we're gonna use two free softwares that you can download and start using right now on your computer. The first one is called Blender. And we're gonna use it to convert the FBX file into BDH. And the second one is called DSSC, which is another free software that we're gonna use to convert our BDH file into VMD. I'm going to add the links to both softwares in the description of this video, so you're welcome to download them now if you want to follow along. So once you'll open Blender, and import your FBX motion to it, you can easily convert it into BVH by selecting your model's armature, going to Export, and clicking on Motion Capture BVH. If by any chance you don't have this option available, you can actually enable it by simply going to Edit, then Preferences, and then just type BVH in the search bar. Then you can check this feature that you see on the screen. Now you can continue to export your motion, and after you're done with that, you can go ahead and open DSSC, and click on the BVH to VMD function. Now you can just click on Load and Convert. Choose your BVH file, click on Open, and DSSC will immediately start converting your file into VMD. Once it's finished, you can just move the VMD file that it created to whatever folder that you want, and you're done. You can now go ahead and import this motion into DSS, and start using it in your animations. So this is basically how I create my animations with DSS. And I highly recommend you to try all of these methods out for yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. See you later!